virtual simulation lab. Today we're going to have, have a talk about plotting by Martin Sune. He's um, at the Department of Physics with Rita here. And um, yeah, I guess afterwards we're going to have Rita. So um, please make sure you stay for the Rita. And um, without further ado, so please go ahead. Thank you. Right. So, um, yeah, I'll be talking about Matplotlib, as the, you can uh, see. Uh, so just um, I t uh, t previously, uh, for plotting, I mean, you have a lot of different libraries. Uh, both in Python, you have other programs, of course. Uh, personally, I've previously used, uh, I need to speak up. <laughs> All right, I'll try to just uh, show with your hand if, I, if, you, if you can't hear it. So if, um, so I started out, um, well, I guess I started out with Excel back in middle school. Uh, quickly dropped that. I uh, used a bit of GNU plots during my studies here. I've used a bit of MATLAB. Uh, and then during my master's, I started using Python. Uh, the reason for this is essentially my use case is I run, typically run programs in simulations, uh, in programs written in C++ or Fortran. I dump a lot of data, then I do the analysis and plotting it using Python. And for that, I typically use matplotlib, which is the, the basic package you want to do for 2D plotting. You can also do some 3D plotting. It's not necessarily the best for that, but you can do it. Uh, you can see from so these are a couple of figures uh, uh, done by a colleague of mine. Uh, so you have a 3D plot, a normal 2D plot, and all that. Now, matplotlib is the de facto plotting package for Python if you do scientific plotting. You do have other libraries, such as Seaborn and Pandas, used for statistical uh, ana analysis and data analysis. Uh, they have the built-in plotting functions, but these are essentially wrappers around matplotlib. You also have other Python libraries, such as uh, Bokeh, uh, VisPy, uh, stuff like that. Uh, but they're not as well developed, or they're typically meant for something else, like Bokeh is uh, uh, created uh, particularly uh, for plotting on the web. Uh, Matplotlib uh, is fairly mature. It's uh, 10, 15 years old. It's currently in version 2.1. Uh, and uh, it started out, uh, uh, it, it allows for both object oriented uh, style of programming and plotting, as well as a MATLAB style uh, approach. Uh, it's fairly customizable. Uh, if you sit around, say, and use uh, Seaborn or Pandas, and you want to change some uh, parameters, you want to go a bit into you know, customize your plots uh, a bit more, you typically end up uh, playing around with Mat matplotlib. So I'm just going to change to the notebook. So this is essentially, um, yeah, just a quick ex uh, example of uh, uh, a basic plot. Uh, very syntax is very sim similar to MATLAB. You see, we just import the libraries first, NumPy and the PyPlot module of matplotlib, which is the main module you typically use. We get some arrays with data, uh, we plot them, and then we use the show function to show the plot. Uh, and then we end up with this. Uh, similarly, if you want to do subplots, you just call the subplot command, you plot them, you set the labels, and then you show that as well, and yeah, you can see that down here. Uh, the other approach is to use the object-oriented uh, uh, style, which is done using the axis objects. So here, we essentially do the, we run, the, we create a figure. Uh, this is essentially your canvas, or it's uh, that you, plot on, then you create an axis object using the add subplot fu function, and we plot on this figure. Similarly, you can add several plot, uh, subplots onto a, a single figure. Now, the axis objects are typically what you would uh, think of as the plot itself. So um, if you want to do an analogy, I mean, the figure or the canvas is essentially like a sheet of paper. You take the paper, and then you uh, draw the axis on. You can draw multiple axes on a single uh, piece of paper. Uh, and these are the axis objects. Then you plot inside the axis objects. Uh, yeah. 
and we see we, yeah, in this case, we end up with the exact same thing. Now, there are some differences here in the syntax once you go between the two, uh, two types. So if you've ever done some object-oriented programming, uh, say, doing a class or something, you, tip you often learn that you want to use separate functions for reading and writing to uh, uh, different parameters. So you use get and set functions, which is why, which you can see here. I mean, we use the set x y label and set y label, whereas in a mat uh, just normal pipeline approach, we just use x label and y label, which is a bit easier. Uh, if you ever play around with Matplotlib, uh, if you ever use Matplotlib, and you end up on the great big internet uh, searching for solutions to your problems, you often end up on Stack Overflow or something. Uh, you want to, and uh, you find different examples. Uh, people use both styles, so even if you stick to one style, you should be aware of the other at least. So you don't end up copy pasting, and then you wonder why your stuff won't run because you should or uh, shouldn't use the get and set functions. Figures are saved uh, just to calling save fig. Uh, and here you also see a difference. In a MATLAB style approach, you do everything sequentially. So here we first, uh, we first create the first plot, and then we show it. Because once we create the second plot using the subplot command, we overwrite the first plot. So if we just common out this show command, you see we only plot the second plot. Uh, similarly, uh, we set the labels. We only do this directly on the current plot we're do, doing, which is this first subplot. If you do the object-oriented approach, you can change them whatever, whenever you want. It also has, uh, you can also pass these objects to functions to do stuff for you. You say you want to customize the plot, you want to do some specific plot uh, now and again, and uh, yeah, so on. Similarly, if you want to save uh, the figures, this is the figure class, uh, which, uh, which you can call save fig with. And you can uh, just give a text string uh, some, uh, for, the, for the file name, and uh, then it saves the figures to whatever um, default file type you have, in a, which is dependent on the back end that you use. I'm not going to go into that. Uh, if you use a uh, file name extension, it tries to save it as that file type. So, uh, in this case, uh, it would save some other plot as uh, PNG, and some subplot will be saved as a PDF file. So, yeah. Access, uh, uh, just a different uh, one thing you will see in Matplotlib is that there's typically more than one way of doing it, doing something. I mean, you, you have the object oriented approach, you have the Matlab like approach. If you want to add subplots, uh, you have this uh, old command using add subplot, which is something you will see in a lot of examples. In newer versions, uh, they've added these to the plot.subplots functions, which just creates a figure of the axis objects, and then you can unpack them to the objects you want to do, want to use, as you have them here. Uh, yeah. If you want to customize the lines to plot a bit more, you can do this fairly short. Uh, fairly quick using just a string with giving the color, in this case C0, the marker type, in this case the circular markers, and the line style, which are just a whole line in this case. And the next one we use the, the color C1, uh, square markers, the uh, dash dotted lines. This uh, plot.style.use uh, uh, is something I'm going, going to go back to in a while. So. Uh, if you want to do some more customization of the line attributes, you, you have, again, two, two ways of doing it. Uh, essentially, in the first uh, example here, we used a shorthand notation. Very nice if you use IPython and just need to plot something quickly, uh, where we set the color, we set the line style, line width, marker type, marker face color, marker edge color, and uh, marker edge width, uh, as well as the label, which has gone outside. It's yeah, pretty much everything. Second uh, example, we just uh, used the verbose commands. And then, as you can see, once you know a bit, you can create quite ugly plots, which is typically not what you want to do. 
so yeah, uh, you can also call a legend using the legend function uh, to show it. Uh, I've also set the font size of that, increase that. Now, if you, yeah. So as you can see here, th there are different ways of calling some of these. Uh, uh, particular, if you look at the colors, you have different ways of calling different colors. You have the short annotation here, which is uh, C1. Uh, it's the default. Uh, in Matplotlib 2, you have defaults going from C0 to C9. Uh, these are blue, orange, and so on. You can use the old style notation, uh, RGB for red, green, and blue values, uh, K for black, uh, stuff like that. You can actually give RGB values, or you can give hexadecimal values, like I've done in the other one, if you really want to customize it. If you don't do anything, you end up with essentially following the default color cycle, like here. So here it just cycles through all the color, uh, different colors, uh, C0 to C4 in this case. Uh, yeah, and this goes on to C9, and then it starts repeating. So if you have a lot of things to plot, they will start overlapping after a while. Now, if you want to change something else than the colors, uh, colors you can do this using cyclus. Uh, this is a quite neat concept. Uh, so here we're just importing cyclus from the cycler library. And then we're setting two different cyclers, one for the line width, one for the line style. So here we set the cycler, we set the attribute we, we want to cycle through, line width, and then we have a list of the different line widths, similar for the line style. Uh, and cyclers, uh, well, you can do a, do a bit of fun stuff with them. You can slice them, you can concatenate them, just like lists. You can also add them together, or you can multiply them together. Now, if you add cyclers, it's essentially like using the zip function in Python. If you're not familiar with that, it's, uh, well, it's named, uh, it's just like a zipper. I mean, you take the first uh, elements of both cyclers, and these are combined. Second elements of both cyclers are combined, and so on. So you create a new cycler combined of four elements in this case, which you cycle through. So you can see here, for the first plot, we have, we go through the si uh, line styles and the line widths. If you multiply them together, you create an out outer product, and then you create in this case, a 4x4 four four cycler, where it goes through all, first the smallest line width with all the line styles, then it goes to the next line width with all the line styles. And you end up with this. So, yeah, two ways of doing it. Uh, in this example, it doesn't really matter, but again, once you have multiple plots, you can see clearly that, I mean, in the first case, you st uh, it starts repeating, uh, so you can't really make any sense of the plot. The second plot, you can easily make sense of the data. Well, easily, if you look at it. And this, uh, now this cyclus, uh, I should also mention, is set using the set prop cycle command here, uh, as you can see here. Now, in older versions of Matplotlib, you had the set color cycle. It set the color cycle, as the name implies. This has been deprecated, so if you have some old Python code and you want to update it, you update Matplotlib to version 2, which came, uh, I mean, uh, version 2 introduced a lot of style changes. It came uh, early this year or late last year, so it's fairly new. Uh, but uh, again, then you want to use set prop cycle instead, and this is a generic cycle, cycle that you can use. Now, uh, just to go back a bit on the object-oriented interface, uh, show an example of that. So in this case, I mean, I mentioned you could send access objects to functions. So in this case, I'm going to be plotting these sine, line, sine curves uh, for quite a few examples. Um, so I created this function where I take in the object, I take in a value i, which is used to shift the curves and label them. I set the x labels and then I uh, just create a access as normal, and I call the plots in function here to plot them. Now, another thing uh, you can do then with these uh, objects, I mean, you have 
different types of objects. I've mentioned the figure objects, you have the axis objects, you also have line objects, or 2D, line 2D objects. Uh, this axe.plot, it actually returns a line 2D object. So, uh, which we can see if we just do a... Yeah. Uh, anyway, I'll show you. But, um, yeah. So, it now goes in, uh, and all of these lines, line objects, are added to the axis object, of course. And then you can extract them using the getLines function, as we do here, and then we get a list, uh, which I've named L1, uh, of all the lines, line objects, in X1. Uh, then we can take, uh, say, the second line of the first list, or the first uh, option. So, uh, yeah. Uh, just remember, Python starts counting from zero. Uh, we set the color to C1, and then uh, using, then we take the third line of the second axis, and then we set the color to the same color as the previous line using the get color attribute function here. And you end up with this. Now, if you ever play around. Uh, you wonder what kind of object you're actually dealing with. You, you want to read up on the documentation, the API, and you're not quite sure what's going on. You can al always check using just printing whatever object you have. So, for instance, we can print fig. And we see figure is a figure object, surprisingly. Similarly, we have uh, x1 is an axis subplot. Or if we do L11, it's a line 2D object. So if you wonder what kind of functions you have for the different objects, uh, you want to read around in documentation, or you know what to search for, then yeah, a simple print statement might help you. Okay. Now. On to text, uh, yeah, text uh, in uh, Matplotlib. I mean, I'm sure I'm not the only one here who's had students in the lab, maybe even master students who've come with reports, uh, labels are missing, text is too small, you can't really read the figures because they screwed up. Uh, some of us might have been that student. If you still are that student, please stop. Um, and so pretty much any text in Matplotlib can be changed using uh, the font size attribute. Uh, for a few things, such as the tick params here, you can you use the label size instead. Uh, yeah, and that's the most important part for that. Now, Matplotlib uh, supports LaTeX style uh, text, I mean, uh, the LaTeX syntax. So you just do it like normal. You, uh, you have a string, you set the, you use the dollar signs, backslash alpha gives you an alpha. Uh, similar for beta. Now, one thing to notice, notice here is that you, in Python strings, uh, backslash is used as an escape character. So, you have backslash n gives you a new line. So, in this case, you need to escape the escape character, which is why you have the double backslash in front of alpha. Uh, a different way of getting around this, because there's never one way in Matplotlib, is to rather pass a raw string. He is setting an R in front, so this just passes a raw string, which doesn't have the escape character. And then we get this. So, uh, yeah. You can also render uh, any figure you plot through LaTeX. So if you have LaTeX installed, uh, you can uh, use this plot pyplot.rc command, set the text, and then use tech. So this uh, figure right now is just the default for Matplotlib. But if we set this to true, you render it through LaTeX, and things tend to look a bit nicer uh, in terms of font than more in line with whatever paper you're, you're writing. Uh, it should be noted that when you do this, you render it externally through LaTeX. Uh, so this, the, this takes some time uh, for short plots like this. It's not a problem. But if you have a large plotting script, you render a lot of figures uh, through LaTeX, things might take a while, and if you don't actually need it, you might just want to disable it for the time being. Uh, yeah. 
Uh, again, also showing some customization of the legend here. So the legend tr typically tries to find the best fit. Now set in the upper left position. If you remove the location, it goes to the upper right position because it's a, there's a lot of space there. If we put it back up, yeah, it's there. You can also set the frame alpha if you want to adjust the transparency of uh, legend. From uh, yeah, at zero it's completely transparent. At uh, one it's uh, completely opaque. Uh, okay, and just finally, a uh, short example of what you can do if you play around with things a bit. Uh, uh, yeah, so now I'm not going to go much into detail here. Essentially, I've just moved the spines around, which is what you might think of as either the grid or the axis. Uh, set the labels. I've moved the labels using the set label coordinates. I've set the. Imp I've uh, specified the ticks that is going to be used here. I've specified the tick labels, which we're going to use on the x-axis, so you get the fractions of pi, and you end up with this. Now, if you ever, if you, if you're ever confused about what is what in a figure, Matplotlib, uh, in the, on the documentation, you have a usage guide, which is, uh, yeah, it's the usage guide, and it starts out with this. Essentially, a nice, uh, nice piece of information giving you. Uh, well, telling you whatever the hell you're trying to f uh, change is called. So you're not sitting there, you want to change the spines, and then you, you try to Google, I want to change the grid in Matplotlib, uh, Python plot, and you get the function to change the grid instead. I tend to forget what these things are called all the time, so. Uh, quick. Uh, Example of just uh, logarithmic plots can be done using the uh, both the semilog uh, x and y functions. You can use the set y scale or set x scale instead. You can use uh, if you want a log log plot, you can use the log log function. Whatever. Uh, you can also share axis or well axis object. You, uh, you want to share say in this case of set share x equals two here between the different subplots. So then we have, uh, we have uh, the x1 is this first one, x2 is the second one. You see uh, we only get the x number, uh, x labels on the tick labels on the x-axis on the bottom figure, not the upper one. And then we can move the figure around, we can play with the padding if we want them to overlap or anything. Uh, alternatively, you have the twin x or twin y functions this thing goes all over the place. So we see here, so here we're creating a new axis object. Uh, and this is x3, which shares, which actually shares the x-axis with x2, as you can see in the bottom plot there. And then you just have a separate y-axis. Yeah. Uh, now, you also, of course, when you run around, uh, when you get large plotting scripts, you don't wa always want to change specify line widths, line colors, or any styles or font sizes for each plot you make. So you want to change the defaults. Again, there are two ways of doing this. Uh, you have the RC params, and then you have style sheets. Uh, RC params is uh, something yeah, is you can use. Well, you can do it dynamically as you go through, you can kind of do that with uh, style sheets as well. And it's just, uh, yeah, you call the RC params from matplotlib itself. Uh, you set whatever, yeah, uh, thing you want to change, lines, and then the attributes, so line width, line color, whatever, access, the prop cycle, label size. And then you end up with the new default. Alternatively, you can use these shorthand functions, uh, RC, which just takes all the attributes of a single parameter and, uh, in a single function. You also have this uh, RC defaults, which resets all the, uh, well, 
stuff. Uh, furthermore, you have style sheets, uh, which we saw earlier. Uh, this is, you can define these yourself, and then you can just uh, load them uh, using plot.style.use. You can also use them within context, so you can have a single block where you use the, that particular style sheet, but not later on. So uh, if you want to see which uh, types are available, you just print plot.style.use available. Oh. Then you get them all. A nice little list, and then you can combine these different sheets if you want as well. So here we, I mean, we have the Seaborn notebook uh, from the Seaborn library. If you use the Seaborn library, this is just called notebook. We have paper, which is tends to be smaller. Poster, which is the Seaborn default, which gives you slightly different colors on a background grid. We have uh, the, uh, the classic matplotlib. So if this is what you typically end up getting, you know you're on version one or something. And it looks like shit. <laughs> I don't know, well. Uh, yeah, so as I said, you can combine these sheets. So if you have, uh, if you make your own, you have one for line stars, one for line colors, for instance, you can combine these. Uh, and then you can set up uh, separate sheets for papers, posters, talks, whatever. Uh, uh, another thing here is this fast uh, that I've included. It doesn't really matter here. Uh, but if matplotlib uh, is uh, not necessarily the fastest plotting library, uh, especially if you have a lot, a lot of data uh, uh, to plot, it tends to be a bit slow. Uh, there are different customization options you can do to simplify the, the plots uh, without, them making, without them looking too bad. And if you use the fast style sheet, it includes all of these uh, simplifications. So if you run your plotting script and you have time to get a coffee in the meantime, I would suggest using that and turning off the LaTeX rendering if you do that. Yeah. Now, uh, uh, yeah. So you see, for instance, I mean, between matplotlib uh, one and two, you have uh, quite a few, quite a difference in style. So here we just the default. Uh, if you so, and you can find a list of that if you go to the matplotlib documentation. They have uh, they go through pretty much everything they changed. Uh, going from version 1.5 to version 2, there was only style changes involved. Uh, but yeah, if you want to go through and see what's different, you can do that. It also in, they also have instructions how to change it back to the classic without using the uh, style sheet. Some other ways of playing around. Uh, you can set the alpha channel, uh, of course, in any plot you want. So say we have this... Um, messy data set and we want to highlight a line we just set the we just dim the lines be behind and uh, then we take the latest line in this case and we set the alpha uh, increase the line width a bit uh, you want to do use insets you can do that uh, in this case I mean you essentially create an inset uh, you create a new axis object using pipe.axis Set the coordinates, set the size, and then you just plot it in it as, as usual. And you get this. Uh, if you want, well, if you want uh, even more, uh, then I mean, you, you have something called patches. You have transforms. So in transforms, you change the coordinates around. Uh, yeah, you move, move stuff around. Uh, patches are essentially objects you draw. Say you want to draw uh, ellipses, for instance, rectangles, circles, uh, arrows. These are patches. Uh, you also have some convenience functions uh, for some of the most used patches. So in case you want to highlight something here, for instance, we have a, 
histogram which we're plotting. Uh, then we add a x v span gives the vertical span essentially, and then we just set the color and the alpha channel. Uh, similarly, you have x h span for the horizontal span. Uh, if you want to add text, you can use uh, the text function uh, as we have here, and you can also use the annotate function. So the annotate function includes some more stuff. So you can add an arrow. Uh, you have separate arrow functions for adding arrows, stuff like that. If you, yeah, you can use fill between. So for instance, like this. So here we just uh, fill between an upper and a lower y limit. We haven't set the lower y limit, so it goes to zero. Similarly, you have a fill between x. Nothing special about that, really. Uh, if you want to do error boss, which, uh, well, there's a large number of papers where they don't have error boss. It's uh, confusing at times. But you then you use the error bar function, uh, something like this. So there are two different examples. In the first, uh, it's, I've just used the default error bar. In the second, uh, of uh, just plotting, I'm just plotting every fifth error bar, and I'm using the fill between uh, function to show the entire, uh, well, it's a deviation of a certain limit, which is. Uh, Neat little thing when they overlap like this and it gets messy. And I'll set the cap size. Uh, now this error boss, um, again, I mean, if we want to see, have a look at what they are, it's essentially a, it's essentially a container object of three artists. So it, uh, you have the axis and it throws in the, uh, yeah, it throws in a line, it throws in the arrow bars on top of this and combines it together. So you can, uh, so if you don't use the arrow bar functions, things are going to get messy quite quickly. Yeah, and then just some example of other plots. Uh, yeah, of course you have other plotting functions you can use. You have scatter plots. 2D histograms, stream plots, contour plots, uh, where you can change between uh, the lines, uh, as well as the filled contour plots, different functions for each of these. So you have, uh, yeah, contour gives the contour plot, the contour lines, uh, contour F gives the filled contour plot. Uh, His2D, we also have hex, uh, Hex spin, I think. Yeah. Well, it's not working properly, but yeah, you have the yeah, you have hex spins, which uh, is an alternative to scatter plots. Now, uh, when I went through this earlier today, I spent an hour. So uh, I'm not sure if I've forgotten anything. Pizza's not here, shit. <laughs> yeah, so uh, just, uh, <coughs> now when, you, when it comes to color maps, uh, you see the difference between, so this is the default color map, uh, it's called Viridis, it's the default in Matplotlib 2. In version one, you used Jet, uh, they don't like Jet, uh, I don't like Jet either. Uh, this is a so-called sequential uh, color map. If you ever want to wonder what kind of color maps you have, uh, available, uh, you have, uh, it's uh, listed here in the tutorial section as well as in this API summary. And if we just look at those, you get an overview of uh, different column maps uh, as well as the different classes of column maps. So for instance, you have sequential column maps, you have divergent column maps, uh, and qualitative column maps, and miscellaneous. And there's some different info in uh, these two sites you know, on these two pages. So you get the di different kind of color maps you have, uh, what they're good for typically. So if you're, uh, and it goes through a bit of the theory behind the, yeah, the color space and what to use when. 
which can be nice to read. So, for instance, we have these, uh, uh, yeah, sequential, diverging, cyclic, and qualitative schemes. Uh, Yeah, this is the latest, and we have uh, No, I'm not going to bother changing that, actually. Uh, finally, of course, even though you can change a lot of options, it's not something you always want to do. So, just remember that sometimes simple is better. Uh, Uh, yeah. So finally, uh, just uh, I have some links here uh, going through. Yeah. So it's the usage guide, the uh, APIs. So the APIs are actually quite neat uh, to read when you're looking for things. So you can also say, if you look at the access class uh, API, uh, if I can find it. Yeah, so here, for instance, we have the access class that gives you, it goes through a, pretty much any function you can find uh, for the access class. And so if you wonder what you can plot, you can run through this. If you go to, uh, the tutorial section, you find uh, quite a few examples of uh, what you can plot with the following code. You have the Python graph gallery, which is a kind of a neat site. Uh, it shows the different types of charts, some explanation of them. So, say a connected scatter plot gives a quick explanation of what it is, uh, what it's used for often, and then you can see some examples with the for, uh, with the code uh, as well. So it's a yeah nice web page if you wonder what kind of plots you if you have some idea of what kind of top plots you want to make. Uh, I would suggest checking it out. Sometimes uh, it uses uh, just uses defaults, uh, the pandas and Seaborn library as default. Um, sometimes it just uses plain map of lib. So here, for instance, it uses the pandas uh, library to call in the data frame and get the data, and then plots it just using normal MATLAB-like uh, syntax of map of lib. This is just uh, changes to the default style going between the different versions, uh, MATLAB 2 and uh, 1. So here, for instance, we see the classic and version 2, different line styles, <coughs> line colors, I mean. Uh, difference in color map going from Jet to Veridis. Uh, then there's a 20-minute video going through why they want a new uh, why they want to change this uh, back in 2015 and with some of the theory behind. Uh, yeah, uh, lots of other stuff. Something I haven't gone through here is, I mean, you can also use Matplotlib, say, to create animations. We saw that a couple of weeks ago here. Uh, 3D plots, as I mentioned, can be tricky, uh, but you can do it. And, well, you can also go away from plotting and use the Library as a basis for something completely different if you want, but I don't see why you would. Uh, I guess if you write other libraries. Yeah. And finally, uh, I would also like to just mention this uh, short art paper uh, by uh, Rugier, Rugier. I don't know, I think it's French. Uh, 10 simple uh, rules for better figures, uh, which you can find as open access and everything. It's a fairly short paper. Goes through a few ideas behind uh, how to plot the, well, as you can say, sim uh, better figures with some examples. So I've taken some of the examples from, well, some inspiration from there. So yeah, know you're in the, yeah. 
different ways of doing whatever. I'm not sure if I can delay this. Oh, excellent. Uh, yeah, that's, uh, I can't delay this anymore, so it's, uh, thank you for your attention. <laughs> Any questions? Send a notebook to Greg, and then he will fix it. So, yeah. don't ask Greg. So the, the, the presentation is going to be on YouTube, and um, the files I think are going to be on the web page. Yeah. Uh, I haven't worked with Python, so it must, might be a very uh, simple question. But uh, is it possible to import like a big stack, a set of stats, and say? Uh, yeah, yeah. So I didn't particularly show that here. Um, but we can. Uh, this is done using. Typically, you want to use. Uh, you could use the pandas library for this. Uh, tip, or you can also use NumPy for this. So it has different functions. Uh, in this particular case, I just use the load text function from uh, NumPy to load a text file with arrays, uh, with data. Uh, you can also specify it. So, I mean, you have load text, you have gen from text, which is a more general. You can seek through the files because Python is originally not made for scientific uh, use. It's the more uh, scripting language or the main language used for a lot of quick uh, work in well, computers in general. So reading from files is something you have a lot of support for. Uh, using NumPy, you have faster functions, loading it into arrays. Uh, you can use set delimiters or type of files, for instance, if you want to, from what you want to separate it from. If you use uh, HDF5 or, um, or NetCDF, then you have libraries for, so, so with support for this as well. 